This tutorial for new Blender users is designed to give you just a small taste of the power of some of Blender's editing tools. And what we'll do in this tutorial is learn about proportional editing. And I used it to design this simple object really quick. But it is, it is really powerful, so let's get started. So, let me see. This is just a plane, believe it or not, in the scene. But I'm going to del delete it. And I'll just add a new plane to the scene. Here, Shift A, add a plane. Where is it? Oh, he's way out there. So, of course, remember Shift S to move to the center. Shift S, selection to the cursor, like that. Then I'll press S followed by the number 9. That just scales it up immediately, like this. And I'll give it a color. Maybe let's see if that color is still in there. Oh, there's, one, there's an existing color of some sort. There we go, like that. All right, so now that I have it in here, I want to give it a bunch of vertices. So there's a couple of ways you can do that. First, I'll bring up the toolbar, and then I'll go into t edit mode, and then I want to subdivide this. But I can either, if I press W to subdivide like this, then right over here I can just specify the number of cuts directly in like this, or the smoothness type of cut, etc. So you can just experiment with that, but let's just give it five cuts. Oh, let's give it nine cuts. Oh, that's not even enough for me. Let me see. Let's give it 16 cuts. Oh, <laughs> I even want more. All right, well, that's good enough. That gives us an idea for a starter. So in here, I'll deselect everything like this. And I'll make sure I'm in vertex select mode. So just right click s selects a single vertex. And then I want to want to make sure is that your proportional editing tool is turned on. I'll select this middle vertex right here. And right over here you have these buttons here, proportional editing. And you can see here enabled or disabled. Make sure it's enabled here. And then this is the type of uh, editing that'll do. We'll just use this default editing mode right here. And what it does is say for instance I just grab this vertex and I want to move it. And I just grab the, this arrow and I move it up on the z-axis like this. Well notice as I'm moving it something else has occurred. There's a circle that surrounds it. And I'll let it go. You see there's a little circle right there? And you see what it did there? So I'm going to hit control Z right now just again. and. I'll grab it again and I'll move it up and see that circle like that? That's kind of your radius of influence for your proportional editing. It's grabbing the vertices that are within that uh, radius of that circle, or within the diameter of the circle really. So as I, if I roll the meal, wheel mouse at the same time, you can see as it gets smaller, I'm not moving the mouse up or down right now, I'm just moving the wheel mouse. And it changes it like this. Now I'll leave it there and now I'll move the mouse up and down and you see the influences out to there. So obviously you can guess if I just press Control Z and do it again, except this time when I do it, instead of grabbing it with the left mouse button, it's actually easier if you press the G key for, and then you press the Z key, since I'm going to move it on the Z axis, then, my, then I don't have to hold the mouse button at the same time that I'm moving the wheel mouse. I just move it up and down like this and I've, I'll roll the wheel mouse independently like this here and then say I set that in place with the left mouse button and I go change this to a sharp point like that. Okay, no, obviously you can guess what's going to happen. I press G and Z and I move it up, right? And you can see it's just a point here. And let's see if I change the radius of influence like this. There we go. Well, suddenly we're building, I don't know, a little volcanic mountain of some sort. Maybe, I mean, maybe I'll just grab this point GZ and I'll move them back down in. But see, I don't want the whole thing to move back down in, so I'm going to crunch that way down like that. So the only thing it's affecting is that, and I can push them back down inside. Let's see. So there we go. There's my little three-dimensional volcano. Of course, if I wanted to up the resolution, well, let's just do that. Let's up the resolution and see what happens. Let's press A, W, subdivide. Yeah, well, then we could have, then we could actually model a little, little bit better like that. So that kind of gives you an idea. Let me now, but you know, your volcano is not going to be so super symmetrical, right? So let's just grab some vertices. I, I don't know. Let me just press 
I'll just look at it like this and I'll press B and I'll just grab these on the top. I'm just using some random selection. Actually, I hit A, I'll deselect them all. I'll go into wireframe mode for the moment. It's easier to select on the other side in wireframe mode. Okay, and now if you see, let me see. Yeah, they're selected on all sides like that. All right, Z. So now I have some at least selected on all sides. So now in this case, I'm just going to do the same type of thing. I'll just change it back to a different type of editing. I don't know, maybe we'll do oh, I don't know, random. Why not? And we'll rotate it this time. We'll rotate it on Z. So R, Z, and then I rotate it like this. And the same thing, see that radius of influence as I bring it up like that? I'm not moving the mouse up or down. I'm just changing the radius of influence like this. But if I rotate it around, there we go. Now we have a craggly little volcanic twisted mountain of some sort in the A and the reset. Quite easy for building surfaces of all kinds. You know, they look, they're starting to look a little more natural than just, you know, a cone or something like that. All right, well, I hope that gives you an idea about proportional editing. It's a great little tool, and uh, you might come to like it. All right, well, that's it for this lesson, and I'll see you in the next lesson.